You wrote the first draft of your pilot script, and it's a little rough. There's some good stuff, some okay stuff, and some stuff that's, well, not great. Your script probably isn't yet strong enough to try to sell or use as a writing sample. So how do you turn that first draft into a final draft? Hi, I'm Micah Craddy, a WGA screenwriter and the head of writing at Arc Studio. This is the sixth lesson in Arc Studio's How to Write a Great TV Pilot course. Today, we're going to learn about revising that first draft and making it as strong as possible. If you're new to this course, you can catch up by checking out the lessons that led up to this point. They're linked below. And if you haven't, please like, subscribe, and turn notifications on for future lessons and videos. Now come join me as we swim across this ocean of learning together, brought to you by Arc Studio Screenwriting and your imagination. The first thing you need when you're revising your pilot script is the right mindset. In the previous lesson, I talked about the idea of vomit drafts. Now, vomit drafts are when you're writing your first draft and you're just trying to get words down on paper. It literally feels like you're just kind of vomiting them up, and you're not worrying too much about making it great. It lowers the pressure, and that's really helpful when you're getting started or trying to overcome writer's block. But that mindset isn't great when it comes to revisions. When you're revising, you need to hold yourself and your work to a higher standard. Because when you're revising, you're not only fixing the stuff that's bad, you're fixing the stuff that's just okay. Because just okay isn't good enough. You want everything to be as strong as possible. It's counterintuitive, but sometimes it's actually harder to fix the okay stuff than the really bad stuff. Because with the really bad stuff, it's obvious that you need to fix it. But with the stuff that's just okay, you can kind of convince yourself that it's good enough. But it's not. You need to dig deep. Now, I'm not saying that you have to fix everything all at once and your second draft has to be perfect. You can revise stuff layer by layer over multiple revisions. The later the revision, the higher your standards should be. Remember, revising is a process. That process starts with reading back over your script, but don't read it right after you finish writing the first draft. Set the script down for a few days or a week, whatever length of time works for you, so you can come back to it with a little distance. When you come back to it, you want to try to read the script from the perspective of a reader, not the writer. The first time you read through it, try doing so without stopping and taking notes so you can get a sense of the flow of the script. When you're done, write down your impressions. Try answering these questions. What was working in the pilot? What wasn't? Where did it seem slow? What were your impressions of the characters? Was it clear what your main characters wanted? Were they actively trying to get it? Then read through it a second time and take notes. If you're reading a printout or a PDF, you can leave comments in the margins. And if you're reading through it in Arc Studio, you can use the comments feature to leave comments for yourself. Think about why your impressions from the first read were happening. So in your first read through, you're thinking about what is working and not working in the script. And in your second read through, you're thinking about why those things are working and not working in your script. This will help give you a basis for what you need to tackle in your next draft. This can also be a good time to go back and rewatch lessons one through five, because some of the things we talked about in those lessons might have felt abstract at the time, but now that you've written a draft, they can be very concrete. All those things we talked about should be in your script. But if they're not, don't worry. Again, it's only the first draft, and that's the whole point of revising. I highly advise you to get feedback on your script from trusted and knowledgeable readers, like other screenwriters, teachers, executives, agents, managers, producers, assistants, whomever. When you do this depends on your script. If your first draft is really rough, if it needs a lot of work, I recommend that you don't send it out for notes right away. Why should you wait? Because if your first draft is a mess, the readers you share it with aren't going to know what you're trying to accomplish. And if they don't know what you're trying to accomplish, they're not going to be able to help you accomplish it. I generally recommend that you at least do one revision on your own before sharing it with readers, but again, it depends. It might take a few rounds of revision by yourself before it's strong enough to share with others. Now, I realize that you may not know trusted and knowledgeable readers who can give you feedback. So where can you get notes from? Well, there are a few options. First, you can try and find a community of writers either online or where you live and get notes from them. Second, you can take a screenwriting class. Again, that can either be online or in person. Third, you can get notes from people who are smart and thoughtful, but aren't screenwriters or in the industry. 
Now, the quality of these notes can vary. I will say that the less your readers know about screenwriting, the more specific you have to be in your questions to them when you ask them for feedback. If you just ask them, what did you think of my script? You're gonna get notes like, it's cool, or wow, you wrote a script. And yeah, that's nice to hear, but it's not really helpful as you move forward with your next draft. Instead, ask them questions like, what do you think this show is about? What do you think the main character wants? Why do they want it? Where did you find yourself losing interest as you were reading? Where did you find you were really engaged? Fourth, you can pay to get notes from services like The Blacklist or Coverfly, and there are a ton of other ones you can find online. This is called getting coverage. Now, I don't know what your budget is, so you're going to have to decide for yourself whether the cost of that is worth it to you. One thing I will say about notes is some of them will be bad. Readers may try to force their point of view onto your script, or not understand what you're trying to do, or just be wrong. But even bad notes can be helpful, because while they might be misidentifying the problem or pitching a solution that's wrong, their bad note might be identifying that a problem does exist. In screenwriting, we call this the note behind the note. It's the true problem in your script identified by a bad note. And it's up to you as the writer to identify what the real problem is and fix it. There are a lot of different elements in a pilot script, and trying to fix them all at once can be overwhelming. So start with the big things first. You don't want to waste a lot of time fine-tuning scene descriptions and dialogue that might not even exist in the next draft. In your early revisions, I'd start by working on your story and character problems. You'll probably realize that even if you outlined your story and developed your characters first, a lot of the stuff isn't working, or at least isn't working like you thought it was going to. Sometimes story beats that seemed great in the outline turn out to be duds in the script, and sometimes character arcs that seemed very clear in your head don't seem so clear on the page. For the story structure, think about what we learned in lessons three and four. I'm not going to go over those lessons in their entirety again, but here are some questions to consider. Does your script have a beginning, middle, and end? Are you hooking the audience in the beginning? Is your inciting incident happening early? Are you escalating and complicating things in the middle? Are you building to a climax? You may need to move some of your story beats around, and you'll probably need to cut some beats and add some new beats. So feel free to create a new outline and write your second draft based on that. For your characters, think about what we learned in lesson two. Does your main character have a clear external goal? something they want in their life that starts in the pilot? Are they actively pursuing that goal, or are they just passengers in their story? Do they have an internal goal, that underlying emotional or psychological reason why they want their external goal? Also, remember the idea of a fundamental disconnect between what your characters want and the reality of their world. That disconnect should be causing problems. And finally, your characters should be going on an emotional journey, they shouldn't finish your pilot in the same place that they started it. After you've dealt with your story and character issues, you can start looking at how it's all flowing together. People talk a lot about pacing, but pacing is one of those words that feels really abstract to me, kind of how theme can feel abstract. Instead of pacing, I prefer to think about momentum. Is the reader being pulled through this story? Are you taking them on a fun ride? This means that they're not reading the scenes individually. Ideally, they shouldn't even notice when one scene ends and another scene begins. There are a lot of different ways you can do this. I recommend revisiting Lesson 5 for more on this, but here are a few pointers. Make sure you don't have a lot of extra fluff in your scenes. Scenes tend to feel slow when they either have a lot of extra stuff at the end or take a while to get to the point. Think about what you need to accomplish in each scene, and get out of the scene once you've accomplished it. Scripts also feel slow when the scenes aren't connected together. Remember when we talked about complications and consequences? If one scene brings up a complication, there's a good bet that the next scene is going to deal with the consequences of that complication. Scenes can also bog down when they lack conflict, so make sure most of your scenes involve a conflict. It doesn't mean that everyone's fighting in every scene, it just means that your characters want something in the scene and are actively trying to get it. But they're facing obstacles they have to overcome to get that thing. They might succeed, or they might fail. Finally, make sure your scenes are serving a purpose. Now, not every scene has to have the purpose of furthering the plot. You can have scenes that are about the tone or developing the characters, but they should be doing something. If you can cut the scene and absolutely nothing changes, you probably should cut it. 
It's hard to give exact advice on action and description lines because everyone has their own style and as soon as you bring up a rule, you'll be able to find a bunch of examples from pro scripts that break those rules. But I'm going to try with the caveat that these are not rules, these are just some suggestions. Remember that while your script is in a way a blueprint for filming the pilot eventually, you're actually writing this for an audience of producers, executives, agents, managers, and their assistants. So you want it to be fun for them to read. You can show personality in how you write your action and description lines. Let your voice shine through. That said, you're not writing a novel. You generally want your action lines to focus on what the reader needs to know to understand your story and what your characters are going through. You don't want to have a lot of really thick paragraphs. I like to think of those as walls of text that your reader is going to see as an obstacle. Also, try to write less about what your characters are thinking and feeling and more about what they're doing. Express what they're feeling and thinking through their actions. Honestly though, my best advice as to how to learn to do this is to read a lot of scripts in your genre and see how the scenes actually look on the page. You don't have to do exactly what you see in these examples, you can express yourself, but it's going to be a good basis for you to build on. Writing great dialogue is one of the things that screenwriters struggle with most. Sometimes the dialogue sounds fake, sometimes all the characters sound alike, or sometimes all the characters end up sounding like you. Here are some thoughts that might help you with this. Dialogue is an expression of a character's unique background and personality. How your characters speak is going to be affected by their age, where they're from, their educational background, and other obvious biographical factors. But it goes deeper than that and ties into their personality. For instance, are they patient or impatient? Are they gentle or rough? Are they assertive or passive? Are they smart or dumb? Do they think quickly or are they more deliberative? Are they cautious with their words or do they say the first thing that springs in their mind? The more you think about what makes your characters unique, the more they'll sound unique. That's why it's really important to develop your characters and get to know them. Dialogue is a tool that your characters use to get what they want. In most of your scenes, your characters should be trying to get something or accomplish some goal, and one of the main ways that they'll do this is through their words. So try to think of dialogue as a tool your characters are using to get what they want. This might mean that they're trying to convince someone to do something, they're trying to comfort someone, they're trying to impress someone or hurt someone, or just make another character understand how they're feeling. But they're not just conveying information through their dialogue. They have an agenda. People don't always say what they mean. I'm talking about subtext. Think about how many times in your life you've said a bunch of words when all you really meant was I'm happy or I'm sad or I'm upset. You didn't say you were happy or sad or upset. That was subtext. And the same thing happens with your characters. They use subtext to convey what they really mean, even though their words aren't directly saying that. Contrast helps things stand out. If you want your dialogue to sparkle, try using contrast. For instance, if one character in a scene is long-winded, try making the other character concise. Or if someone is logical, make the other more metaphorical. There are a million other different contrasting styles that you can use. Just remember that if your dialogue all looks, sounds, and feels the same, it's going to blend together for the reader and they're going to tune out. None of it is going to stick in their brain and none of it's going to be memorable. As you're revising, it can be easy to get tunnel vision on the scenes and the characters and the dialogue and all that and lose sight of the bigger picture. Remember what it is that you're actually trying to say in your pilot script and make sure that you say it. But of course, you're not writing a philosophical treatise, you're telling a story. So you need to express your theme through your story. If you go all the way back to lesson one, you'll remember we talked about philosophical conflict. And philosophical conflict is one of the ways that you can put your theme in your story. To do this, express your theme as a conflict or argument between two sides, and have different characters representing the different sides of the conflict. Your theme is revealed by the decisions your protagonist makes, the consequences of those decisions, and which side of the philosophical conflict is proven to be right in the end. Finally, remember that while a pilot script is similar to a movie script in that they're both telling a story, they differ in that the pilot script is also setting up the entire series moving forward. So as you revise, you need to make sure that your pilot script is setting up the series moving forward. Think of this as the end of your pilot launching us into the season and the whole series. 
You've answered one smaller question with the story in your pilot, but you're also asking a much larger question that we'll be exploring moving forward. What that question is depends on your show, but your protagonist is facing some kind of problem that's going to keep happening to them in different ways. This ties back into something we learned in the very beginning of Lesson 1, the chronic conflict in your show. It should be clear by the end of your pilot script which aspects of your show are going to keep causing problems for your characters because those problems are going to be where your stories come from for your future episodes. I've thrown a lot of ideas at you over the course of these six lessons, and writing a pilot is hard, so you'll probably feel overwhelmed or discouraged at times, but I want to encourage you to keep at it. Our writing abilities are not set in stone, and neither are our scripts. Both of them can improve over time through practice. Try not to get hung up on whether your script is perfect or not, because no script is perfect. Instead, focus on your growth as a writer and try to fall in love with the process of writing. If you love writing and are improving as a writer, I call that a success. From all of us here at Arc Studio, thanks for watching, be kind to yourselves, and happy writing.